Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I thought I'd show you how I made this little picnic table barbecue card. And I'll be giving you the dimensions and show you how to do the cutting for the picnic table itself. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start by using this Let's Barbecue set from Lawn Fawn. We're going to be stamping quite a few of these images and you can see you have a lot of cute little items here and also some cute little sentiments as well. And we also have the coordinating dies. Then I'm going to be doing my stamping on the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. So I put those in my Misty stamp positioner and we will be uh, stamping three of that little bottle there. So I'm going to ink these stamps up using my Versafine Onyx Black ink. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp those. And again, I'm going to be stamping that bottle two more times. So I just cleaned it off and stamped it again. And then the same thing, I'll clean it and stamp it one more time. So I'm going to go ahead and attach the coordinating dies to all of these images. And I cut them down to size so I could run them through my Sizzix Sidekick machine. This is the Tim Holtz version of the Sidekick. And if you cut them down small enough, you can run all these little pieces through the machine, which is a lot easier. It's really quick and simple to do. So I ran everything through and you can see I have all my little pieces there cut and ready to go. So I'm using the Cracked Pistachio and the Peacock Feathers. These are the Distress Markers from Tim Holtz. And I'm using my Blender Pen from the Tombow Dual Tip Marker Collection. And I'm going to go ahead and start off with my lightest color. And I'm going to be using the darker color just along those edges there. And then I'm going to blend these two together using my Tombow Blender Pen. And I'm just going to pull that darker color into the lighter color, sort of down towards the center of the grill here. And if it gets a little too dark, I'm just going to clean that off using a piece of scrap paper and then just continue blending. I want to keep that lightest color right in the center there. You can also use the water brush here um, or just water on a brush or one of your actual water brushes. Tim makes a nice one. The detailer tip water brush would work really well. But I thought maybe for today I would just use my blender pen. And then I'm just adding a little bit of that darker color up underneath the grill there and I'm going to pull it down towards the bottom. And then I'm adding a little bit of color around the rim the back rim and doing the same thing, adding the darker color and then I'll blend those two together. Now I'm going to take the hickory smoke and the black soot, which is like a gray. Uh, the hickory smoke is kind of a medium gray color. And again, I'm going to start at the, the edges there and then I'm going to add a little bit of the black and then I'm going to pull those two colors in towards the center as well. And again, keeping that lightest area down the middle there. And just keep cleaning off your pen. If it gets too dark, take some of the color away and then come back and continue blending. And you do want to clean your blender pen in between colors. And there you can see that we have that all set. So now for these three little bottles, I'm going to use the Festive Berries on the first one. And this is going to be my ketchup. So I'm going to be doing ketchup, mustard, and relish. So for this one, I just used the one color. I just used the Festive Berries just along the edges and then I'm going to use that blender pen again making sure it's clean and then I'm just going to pull those colors in towards the center here. Again just removing color if it gets too dark and blending that out. 
and that will give you a nice highlight down the center of these bottles. I'm going to do the same technique here for the, uh, the next one and you can see that a little bit better there. And then for the mustard, I'm going to use two colors here. I'm going to use the mustard seed and the spice marmalade and I'm just starting with the lighter color. And then I'm going to add a little bit of that darker color just along the edges there. Just because I thought the uh, mustard seed was just a little too light. So I'm adding a little bit more of that darker color. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing we did with the, uh, the ketchup bottle. And I'm just going to blend those in towards the center. And keep that center area the lightest. So now that mustard bottle is all set. So now I'm going to take Twisted Citron and Mowed Lawn and I did the same exact thing. I applied the lighter color first, then the darker color, and now I'm just going to blend those two together the exact same way I did with the other two bottles. And here I'm just going to blend that out and this will be the, the relish bottle. So now all three of those little bottles are all set. So now I'm going to take the cracked pistachio and the peacock feathers and I'm going to do the same exact thing that we did on the grill. Um, starting with the lightest color, then adding my darker color and blending those two towards the center. Okay, so that one's all set. Now I'm going to take ground espresso, dried marigold, and vintage photo. And I'm going to start with this lightest color here. And I was trying to decide what colors to use to make this little hot dog, but I thought the dried marigold was the closest. And then if I added some of the vintage photo, just to make it kind of look like it was cooking on the grill a little bit here, um, and then kind of blend those in together. Kind of gave me the effect that I was looking for here. And then I ended up coming in with that third color, just to give a little bit darker around this, the edges, the sides of it. So there's that darker color. And I'm adding a little there on the grill marks and just kind of blending that in a little bit. And then again, I did come in a little bit around those edges and pull that color in. So you can see that there, that's, that's pretty good. So now we have festive berries and black soot. And to do the, the, uh, the steak here, I thought I would do the festive berries on the two ends and then pull that in. And I was trying to decide what color to use to make the meat look like it was cooking, just kind of like the same thing with the hot dog. So I decided to use the black soot here and just add a little bit of that darker color, again, kind of on the edges. And I didn't use much because the black, it seems like it goes a little bit, goes a long way. So I just kind of pulled that in. And if you need to, just clean off that pen if it gets too dark. If you put too much black down, just kind of keep, just grab that color and put it on your scrap paper and then go back and blend. And I thought that came out pretty good. So now with the antique linen and the gathered twigs, I'm just going to do the little hamburger bun here. I wanted the top of it to be the lighter color and sort of down towards that center again. I'm just going to kind of pull up and towards the top of the bun there. And you can go right over those little seeds because we're going to color those in later. So just kind of keeping it at the top of it, the lightest color. And then on the bottom, just kind of bringing it in towards, towards the center again. And 
Now for the lettuce, I'm going to use, I'm sorry, for the cheese, I'm going to use the mustard seed. And then for the lettuce, I'm going to use the mowed lawn. And I'm just kind of putting it on either end and blending again towards the middle. And then for the hamburger, I'm going to do the same exact thing we did with the steak. So the festive berries and the black soot. And then for the little seeds, I'm going back to the gathered twigs and I'm using the detailer tip of it and just coloring those in. So now going back to the uh, marigold color, I'm going to color that hot dog exactly the same as the, the other one there. The two colors here. The vintage photo and the dried marigold. And blend those two out really wasn't a lot of it to, to color. And then for the mustard seed, again, for the mustard, I'm going to just do that across the top there. And then the same thing again for the little bun here. The lightest color and then a little bit of that darker color. So now you can see that one is all set. So now we have all of our pieces colored in. So now I want to take the Bristol Smooth cardstock and I'm going to cut two panels from that. I'm going to cut two panels at four and three quarters by six and three quarters because we're going to be making a five by seven card. So I'm using my We Are Memory Keepers uh, trim and scoreboard to cut these two panels. And now I'm going to take the grassy border die set from Lawn Fawn and I'm going to take one of those panels and I'm going to cut this grassy border along the bottom. But you can see that it doesn't fit all the way so I'm going to run it through once and then I'm going to just take it and reposition it over towards the right hand side here trying to line it up as best I can with that last blade of grass there. And I'm going to tape that down with my purple tape and then I'm going to run that through again. And that will cut the rest of that border for us. So now you can see I have that long panel there. I'm going to save that other piece of cardstock. And I'm going to take the mowed lawn and the twisted citron. And I'm going to ink up this grass entirely with the twisted citron. Just one layer completely across the entire panel. And then I'm going to come in with that darker color and just go across the top of the grass there. And then taking that Twisted Citron and just blending that applicator without adding any ink, I'm just going to blend those together. Now to do the sky, I'm going to use three colors. I'm starting off with the Tumbled Glass, which is my lightest color. And then I'm going to be using the Peacock Feathers, and I'm just adding a little color here and there, just some little circular areas here and there. And then the last color is my Mermaid Lagoon. And again, I'm doing the same thing, just kind of adding some little spots of color here. Because I'm going to come in with the tumbled glass, and I'm going to blend all of those three colors together. I just kind of want some light areas and some darker areas. So you can kind of see that there. Now with the Distress Sprayer, I'm going to come in with the, this is just water, and I'm going to spritz a little bit of water on there. Take a clean paper towel and blot up the excess, and that's going to give us some little 
kind of like little splotches in the sky there. So now I, I'm going to create my 5 by 7 part. So I'm cutting this at 7 inches by 10 inches. And then I'm going to score this at 5. So in order to do the scoring, you have to flip that little panel over and that will create a little edge and your paper will butt up right along that edge. And I'm going to score it at 5 inches. And then I'm going to just fold this in half. And using my uh, Lawn Fawn Bone Folder, I'm just going to press out that crease. So that's, that's our 5 by 7 card. And now our little uh, panels are going to fit right in here. So that's the sky and the grass. And that will leave a little white border all the way around. So now with the other piece that we had left over, I just cut off the grassy edge. We're going to use this wood grain background and the VersaFine Vintage Sepia. And then my Fiskars Stamping Positioner. And it has these little soft feet on it. So you can line it up over your cardstock. And then once you have it positioned where you want it, you just press it down and stamp. So it gives you a little time to get it lined up. Uh, you just lay it down. It sits on top of the table until you're ready. And then you press it and stamp it down. So I'm going to go ahead and ink up the, just the ends of this stamp here for these last two little pieces. And so I've got this panel completely stamped. So I went ahead and did that. And now I'm going to go ahead and ink this up. I'm going to use brush corduroy. And I'm going to apply that all over the entire panel. And now I'm going to add a little bit of darker areas with the ground espresso, just kind of where those knots in the in the wood are. Just kind of adding just a little little circular motion there, a little bit of the ink there, just to create some darker areas. Then I'm going back to the applicator tool with the brush corduroy, and I'm just going to blend that out. And don't worry too too much here because we are going to be cutting this up to make our picnic table. So it's not going to be real fussy, and we are going to be adding a little bit more ink later on. So now I've cut these panels to size, and I'm going to take these panels, and I have the measurements on the screen there for you. And I'm inking them up with the ground espresso. And so I've got one that measures four and a half by five and five eighths, one that measures six and a quarter by five eighths and two panels that measure two and a half by five eighths. And those are going to create the little picnic table here. So now I've got this panel with the sky that's already done. I'm going to grab my glue tube and add glue to the back of this entire panel. And I'm going to glue that down. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my grassy border I'm just going to fluff up these little blades of grass a little bit, just using my fingers, just to kind of pull them forward a bit. And then I'm just going to add glue down at the bottom of these of this panel because I want to leave a little room there to tuck in the legs of the picnic table. So I'm just adding that panel. And now I'm going to take the little pieces for the picnic table here. And that one that measured four and a half is going to be the top of the table. The one that measured six and a quarter is going to be the, the, the bottom or the seat part of the table. And then these two panels that are two and a half inches are going to be the legs of the picnic table. So this is going to be looking at it from the side. So I'm just adjusting here just to see where I want everything to be. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue this in place, just centering it on the card here.
So now that I have that all set, I decided to come in with the gathered twigs and I'm using the fine point tip on this marker. And I'm just going to create some little like uh, nails, nail heads here. And I'm doing about four of them on one side and I did four on the other. And now taking the gingham background, I'm going to go ahead and stamp this using the Lawn Fawn Lobster ink. And I'm placing a, that, a panel in my uh, Misty, just enough to get one panel of this gingham print. And I did end up stamping this about three times to get a nice complete coverage. And that was why it was a good idea to place it in the Misty so I could stamp it a few extra times. And now I'm just trying to decide where I want. I'm creating a little tablecloth here for my picnic table. I'm just trying to figure out about how wide I want this to be. And then I'm cutting this down a bit. And then I'm going to create a triangle here. Just to create like a little, uh, the, that the, the tablecloth is kind of hanging over the edge of the table. So I went ahead and put it in my Tim Holtz paper trimmer. And I'm just trimming it down to size. Now I did end up cutting it a little bit smaller after this. I thought it was a little too large, so I went and cut it down a bit more. And then I added, decided to add a little bit of a stitched border around this tablecloth. So I'm just taking my Jelly Roll black gel pen and just kind of freehand adding some stitching here. And I'm going to add a couple little hash marks on either side just to make it look stitched and you can see that there. So now that's going to get glued right at the top of the table and with the Jelly Roll pen I do like to heat it up, heat set it after I'm done because it does stay wet quite a bit longer than you would think it would. So I heat set that and I'm gluing that to my card. Now we have the little grill and I want that to kind of be up at the top towards the left. But I wanted to add a little bit of uh, that smoke coming out of the grill and the sentiment which says relish the day. Again, this is from the Let's Barbecue stamp set. And I'm just placing the grill on there and double checking the positioning of the sentiment, just making sure that my little hamburger will fit on there. And again, checking to see where the smoke is going to be. And then I'm closing the lid here and I'm going to ink those up with the VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I went ahead and did that. And now I just want to again position the grill on the tabletop here. And I'm kind of tucking it in behind there because I want to make it look like it's sitting right on the table. So I'm going to add some glue. And I'm adding a little bit to the legs as well. And I'm going to slide that down in there. If you can't slide it in, just cut those legs off a little bit because that's what I ended up doing with that one leg. I just kind of came in with my scissors and just snipped it down. And now I'm going to add the little steak and the little hot dog. And then I want to add the this little platter for the hamburger, but I decided to cut away some of it. And that would make a flat edge to put it right on the table there. And then the hamburger is going to go right on top of that. Now I want to add my three little bottles. Ketchup with the mustard and the relish. And I thought since the sentiment said relish the day, I would put the relish in the front. And then I'm adding another hot dog on a bun here. And now I'm going to add these little chicks. And this one of them is from the Critter Concert. And the other one is from the Elfie Selfie collection. So I went ahead and stamped and die cut those. Now using worn lipstick, spice marmalade, and squeezed lemonade, I'm going to color in these little chicks. So I'm starting off with the lightest color. 
I'm adding a little bit of the darker color. And then I'm going to add the pink to the cheeks here. And then I'm just going to blend everything together. Just kind of go gently around the cheeks in your blending. Just kind of bring that color down and then a little bit from the bottom up. And leaving that center the lightest. And then I'm going to add that spice marmalade to the beaks. So I did all three of those the same exact way. You can see there up close. So now I'm going to glue down my little chicks. I thought this one would be cute right up here at the top of the picnic table. And then I put one down in the grass there. So the next thing I wanted to do was add a few uh, little highlights. So I'm using my Jelly Roll white gel pen. And I'm just coming in and adding some highlights. Anywhere here is fine. Just kind of have fun with this and just place them where you think it would give the best effect. And you can skip this all together if you want. But sometimes it just adds a little bit more interest. And then I just added a little tiny, three little dots to each of their little cheeks here. Now with the Nouveau Crystal Glaze, which is just a clear glaze, I'm just adding a little bit to each of their beaks. And a little to the lettuce on the hamburger and the mustard on the hot dog. Now, from the Bicycle Built For You set, I'm going to grab that little cluster of flowers. And I ended up stamping it about six or seven times. But I think I only used six of these. So I'm going to take the Festive Berries Distress Marker, and I'm just going to blend these colors out again. They're all the same exact color. I'm just going to use the blender. And that's all I did. I die cut those. And then we're going to start adding those to the card here, just for a little more color down at the bottom of the card. And I'm going to go ahead and just glue those flat right onto the card. And I use six of those. And then I'm going to take the crystal drops, the Nouveau drops, and I'm going to add a little drop into the center of each of those flowers. And now you can see the completed card. I just think this is a fun card. It makes me want to have a picnic, <laughs> get out the grill and start grilling. I guess I'm really ready for springtime. So here's the complete card. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. Thank you so much for visiting and have a great day. Bye-bye.